Good morning, Divorcing Gracefully and Beyond Sisters. What a lousy day here in New York. Man, did I get left. great weather. And like I like to say, every day is a great day in spite of the weather. <laughs> Although it's hard when it's rainy and cold and miserable. Hello, April. Good morning. And thank you guys for joining me with another episode of Coffee Chat with Donna. And I couldn't wait to get here this morning because it's kind of interesting. When I go to sleep at night, I kind of set the intention that I'll get what I'm supposed to speak about on, on a coffee chat. And what is, what is the group as a whole? What are the messages that need to be heard? And this morning, I got a loud and clear message for our coffee chat conversation. And the ch- conversation is about grit. So here's what I mean by grit. Hey, Karen. Oh, yes, Karen, we finished the meditation challenge. Awesome. So for those of you who you probably don't know, but in my private Divorce and Gracefully and Beyond 12-week program with my clients for the month of March, we did a meditation challenge. And what we did is we dedicated at least once a day to enter into um, a meditation. And the purpose of that being is to take our nervous system out of fight or flight and move it into a parasympathetic nervous system of peace because that's where creation is. That's where miracles and synchronicities flow. And what we know is that our angels, God, spirit, source is at a vibrational level of frequency. And if we're operating at a low level of vibrational frequency, like shame, guilt, frustration, and again, if we're operating there temporarily, totally fine. We just don't want to buy a house on the street. So if we're operating at a lower level of vibrational frequency, our angels and our guides, they can't lower their vibrational frequency enough to come down and help us. And that's why sometimes we really do feel alone and we feel stuck and we feel uh, myopic because also if we're not in um, that higher level of vibrational frequency where our brain is at rest and we're able to see the world in a different way, We feel, again, we feel very constricted and we're not able to see the label through the jar. It's kind of like the saying, I can't see the forest through the trees because we're so deep into it, we can't see through it. So the meditation challenge allowed us to kind of step out of that and step into this new way of seeing the world. And Karen, I'm so excited because let me tell you, girl, you nailed it. Nailed it. You dedicated to your, yourself to it. There's ways that I teach my clients how to even test their heart coherence to ensure that they're in heart coherence and that they are at the point of meditation that will they will see results in their life. And I'm so excited for you, Karen. Amazing. Because this is the beginning of a, of a lifetime of practice. And we're all going to fall off the wagon from time to time. And that's the coffee chat today. So Karen, I'm so glad you shared that because I was saying in the beginning, what was the content of my coffee chat and the content of my coffee chat is grit. And what happens when we fall off the wagon, right? Because now that spring is here, we're actually at the first quarter is done of 2021, January, February, March, Q1. I used to work in corporate. So we used to go by quarters. Q1 is finished. And it's just a reminder, guys, how fast time goes, right? Like that blink of an eye, time goes. So don't wait to do the work. That's one thing that I can implore on you. Don't wait to do the work. And if you're not currently working with me and you're interested in doing the Divorcing Gracefully and Beyond program, do it and and do it now because you will not regret it. And I'll put a link underneath this Facebook Live so you could go ahead and book a breakthrough call with me where we could strategize to see if that's the right fit for you. But anyway, going back to grit and going back to what happens when we hit a wall, because I hate to be the one to tell you, actually, I'm going to love to be the one to tell you this, because life is always going to have pleasure and life is always going to have pain. 
and there's going to be varying degrees of both of them. So if we're trying to get through life only having pleasure, moving away from pain, I don't want to feel pain, I don't want to feel stuck, I don't want to feel lonely, I don't want to feel sad, Number one, you're going to create more of what you don't feel because that's what you're focusing on. But number two, that's an unrealistic expectation. The difference between people who do the work and people who don't do the work is our ability to move through those tough emotions and tough times faster. So rather than them being all encompassing and stealing years of our life, we move through them in moments. And I know I've shared this example that I have met women many times have had conversations, even just in general day-to-day stuff, going to my children's events and sitting down and chatting. And people don't know what I do for a living. I don't really tell them. But we start talking and inevitably there's handfuls of people who are divorced, been through divorce, separation, and we begin to talk. And I've asked women, wow, it sounds like you're really in, in the, got the swing of it. You know, I'm so sorry. And you know, how, you know, how long has this been going on thinking they're going to say, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe a month, two months, something like that. Turns out they say to me, oh, I've been in this, I've been divorced 20 years, 30 years. And that's what I'm going to say to you. Don't be the woman who says all of these things that she wants. And then 20 to 30 years go by and you're saying, yeah, I've been divorced 20 to 30 years. And I'm kind of still in the same place. There's no reason for that. The only reason that that happens is because of fear. Because fear is going to keep you myopic. It's going to keep you focused on the problem. And it's going to keep you focused in paralyzation. And kind of running around with your own tail. With your tail. So going, let's go back to grit. And let's go back to hitting the wall. So hitting the wall actually is a good thing. Because Let's say you decide to be a boxer and you say, okay, Donna, my career, I'm going to be a boxer. So I'm going to go into the wing. I'm going to go into the ring. Hi, Tina. Good morning. I'm going to go into this ring of life and I am going to have my first match or set. I don't know what boxers call it, but let's just say my first boxing match and you get hit in the face and you come out of that ring and you say, Donna, I can't believe I just got hit in the face. I can't believe my nose is bleeding. Of course your nose is bleeding. You signed up to be a boxer. You're going to get hit in the face, but you didn't get knocked out so you could get back in the ring and continue the match. It's the same thing with life. If you're going to go after great things, if you're going to step into a new expansion of yourself, life is going to hit you in the face. But the difference, again, between people who do the work is we expect it. And when life hits us in the face, we say, wow, isn't that interesting? Holy shit, that hurt. And we may need a little time to get back from the wobble. We may need a little time just to get our marble street in our head and figure out what's going on. But when I say time, I mean hours or days. I don't mean years. So we may need a little time to be there. But we expect the wall to come to us because it's an indication. It's a leading indicator that we are stepping into a new level of consciousness for ourselves. We're stepping into a new way of being. And when a new way of being comes up, our subconscious is going to do everything it can like a spoiled child who's having a temper tantrum to keep us where we were because it doesn't know how to keep you safe in this new level of playing field you're at. So it's going to do everything it can to bring you back. And that's where we get to say to our subconscious mind, where in the past, the emotion may be ruling the body, but now our mind is going to rule the body. And what we're going to say to it is, it's okay. We are safe. It's okay to be here. Because your body doesn't know and your subconscious mind doesn't know good or bad. doesn't know that moving forward and stepping into this new version of yourself is good. It just knows, it doesn't know how to keep you alive that way because you've been operating in sadness or being stuck or in the patterns of, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, or I don't know if having a good relationship is possible for me, or, you know, marriage in my family is just not a thing. I come from a family of divorce and separation, and that's just what's going to happen to me, right? That's just going to be my bag in life. So it's going to bring you back to that. And what your subconscious mind is going to do, it's going to look for everything in its environment to reinforce that belief system that you can't have what you want. 
So it's going to look at the failure and you're going to end up maybe falling off the wagon in other areas of your life. You may have been eating really well only to find out you raided the closet the night before and you ate an entire sleeve of Oreos. And then the entire sleeve of Oreos leads to, well, I might as well just have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And before you know it, the eating plan that you've done so well, which has nothing to do with your growth, your personal development and growth goes to shit. And then you start feeling guilty and bad. And then the next thing you know, your workout plan that you've been doing so well on, you start skipping some of those sessions. And then, you know, and then all of a sudden you're going to be looking and see things. This the self-development work doesn't work for me because you hit a wall. So now when we, we can become as a divorcing gracefully and beyond sister, we move into wisdom and we look at it and we say, okay, this sucks. I, I don't like this wall. And even in the Bible, Job, in one hot second, Job's life, his whole family was taken away from him. His entire cattle was taken away from him. Everything covered head to toe in boils. He never lost his faith, but he did get angry. And that's where I give you guys the permission slip. I give you the permission slip. It's okay to get angry and to say, wait a minute, this freaking sucks. I, this is not what I expected. This is not what I wanted. But here's what I'm going to look at it as. This is an up leveling. This is me reaching my upper limit. And this is me going, I'm going, it's a, I'm going to move through this upper limit. So what's going on in my life right now during this wobble? When I hit the wall and I'm experiencing hitting the wall, what are my true belief systems, right? Because the one thing that we'll ask ourselves is, I don't think, what happens if this doesn't work? And here's another option for you that's available at any given time. What happens if this does work for me? Right? What happens if this does work for me? So it's having the faith that you're on the path, that you're creating this life, that what you want is possible for you, and that you just may not know how to get there yet, and that's okay. None of us do. None of us have the manual for life that gives us the perfect way to do it and the absolute hack to getting exactly what we want, exactly how we want it, when we want it. Gosh, I don't even, I mean, that we would be God if we had that, and we're not. <laughs> so no one has the manual. But here's the manual of Divorce and Gracefully and Beyond. Number one, we never give up on our dreams. Number two, we have the overall belief system that everything always works out for us. Number three, a wobble is an identifier of an upper limit and a leading indicator we're doing the work. And we're not going to make it mean that it doesn't work or that I'm giving up or this, I can't do this, or this is not possible for me. We're not going to create a story around it and let our entire life implode. What we're going to say is this is an upper limit. I reached an upper limit. I don't like it. And what, what can I, what can I learn from it? Because these, this, the old rules that I go by, maybe I need to recreate my rules. And my new rule is these ups and downs I'm no longer available for. That my outcome of what I want is 100% coming my way. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. And I'm going to work with whoever I need to work with to help me because that's, the value of coaching is being able to energy clear yourself, get rid of those, those, the energy that's been toxic for you. But secondly, actually this three, the three C's, right? The energy clears coaching and community. That's why teams, if you look at professional teams, they don't just get coached once or go to one therapy session and then they're good. They hire coaches. They are the best coaches to help them get better, right? Because we want to go from good to great. And we can't do that alone. That's, that's why teams and people and companies hire coaches. And guys, I remember, remember a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was last week, and I was talking about the show Billions, and I couldn't remember the coach that was on the show. Her name was Wendy Williams, or not Wendy Williams, Wendy Rhodes. Wendy Rhodes. Wendy Williams, I think, is a talk show host. Wendy Rhodes was her name. And that's what companies do. High performance level companies have coaches on staff that when people are, are wobbling or their mindset's hitting a wall, because again, we're all going to hit a wall, they have the coach on staff to help them through their mindset. So if you're wobbling and you can't seem to get through the wobble, let's relanguage this to there's nothing wrong with you. Congratulations, you're human. You're at a wobble because your spirit is leading you. You have a leading indicator. You're ready. You're at your upper limit. Your spirit is leading you to your next level. It's just that your body hasn't made it there yet. Your mindset hasn't made it there yet. So we've got to condition your mindset to reach your dream. 
If we don't condition your mindset to reach your dream, that dream is always going to be elusive. It's going to be like the carrot. You're just going to get to the carrot and then that carrot is going to move another 10 feet. You're going to get to that carrot again and it's going to move another 10 feet. So that's the value of coaching. And, and again, it doesn't have to be me. I would love it to be me. It doesn't have to be me. But the value of coaching is going to drive you and help you condition and get better and better and better. So when you are reaching your upper limits and when you're reaching and you're conditioning yourself to meet your dreams, you've got to condition yourself to meet your dreams and you've got to condition your energy and your vibrational frequency to be able to meet God, source, angels. So together we could step into miracles and synchronicities and walking in this thing called life. Guys, here at Divorcing Gracefully and Beyond, we don't lead just good lives. We lead exceptional lives. And I've seen bodies healed. I've seen lives healed. I've seen finances healed. I've seen families healed. I've seen love come. There's nothing we cannot achieve. Miracles are here. But you've got to meet them. Right? The, if you think about the law of attraction, the last six letters of attraction are action. You've got to take action and do whatever you can and hire the best people to help you get there. That's the grit. We can't do this thing alone. So anyway, I'm at Starbucks getting my cup of Java, even though it's pouring and gross down here in Port Jefferson, New York, but me and Casey don't care. We're going to enjoy the day anyway, and I hope you guys enjoy the day. And I'm sending you love. Have a kick-ass day. Get up, put on your makeup, get a kick-ass outfit on, take those underwear out of your drawer that have holes and bras that don't fit you anymore. Get them out, guys. Get them out. Go and buy some kick-ass underwear, lingerie, nice stuff, even though you may be saying, Donna, I don't have anybody to wear it for. Yeah, you do. You have you to wear it for. So go ahead and do that. Make that at least one of your actions today to stepping up into this new level. Go buy yourself really nice underwear. Kick it, wear it. Have a kick-ass day. I'll see you later. Love you. Bye.